Hello everybody, my name's Tank Runner, and welcome to another episode of Drawing Roulettes and World Building. Today we're going to continue working on our project to create our own custom D&D pantheon. Last episode we worked on the Sovereign of Cinder, Goddess of the Sun, the Savage Warden, God of Wrath, War, and Destruction, the Endless Valor, God of Protection, Justice, and Courage, and the Withering Lady, Goddess of Decay. If you want to see those covered in more detail, there's a link in the description. I want to kick us off with some world building and a small recap of the lore. So if you're not interested in that and you just want to skip to the part where you get to see all the artwork, here's a time code for that. Everyone else hold on to your cheeks because we're going to be moving so fast they're going to clap. I'm so sorry. I'm not normally like this. I try to make my videos stand out on their own, so then people who haven't seen the other episodes of a series aren't reluctant to click. I have been absolutely horrified to slap a part two at the end of my titles because I know that it's going to make it get less traction, but I feel like that problem is unavoidable here. If you watched the first video, awesome. If not, I'm glad you're here. And also, who the f are you? Like, what kind of life do you lead? Just no f**ks given, huh? You see a video that says part two, never saw part one. It. You're a free spirit. You do whatever the fuck you want. I know I said that we were going to do a recap of the lore, but this shit is so fucking dense. There's just no way to streamline this. So I'm going to go ahead and just pull a substitute science teacher and just wheel this bad motherfucker in here. And if you watch the lore segment of the first video, I'm literally just going to play that now. Once again, I am so sorry. This episode really got off the fucking rails fast. Here's a history lesson in a world that doesn't exist. Get ready to forget your time in the fifth grade because your brain is gonna have to make some room. Back before the Age of the Gods, there existed beings known as Primordial Titans, otherworldly beings that created the world of Ethos. The worship or study of Titans is considered extremely taboo, due to the negative effects it can have on those foolish or desperate enough to do so. But as a means to better understand their own history, scholars have agreed to give individual titles to the Primordials. The most important of these Titans is the All-Seeing Mother, who created the Material Plane. This event brought forth the next primordial, the Ever-Dying, the First Sun, which, depending on who you ask, is either the creator of Ethos or Ethos itself. As the realm began to take shape, fire was born, and with it, another titan, the Devouring Ember, Father of Flame, First of the Dragons. The existence of this flame cast light and shadow on Ethos for the first time, the Radiant Keeper and the Eternal Dread, Bringer of Death. The battle between these two primordials haunt the realm to this day. Life was first brought to Ethos by the Radiant Keeper in the form of the Ancient Ones, lesser titans to the primordials. It's believed by some that these beings were not created intentionally, because soon after doing so, the Radiant Keeper created the Elder Gods, beings that possessed the power to slay titans and to control aspects of time, matter, and existence. A battle ensued between these divine beings and the Ancient Ones for eons. Some of the Elder Gods were overwhelmed by the power of the Ancient Ones, losing themselves to the Eternal Dread. These Gods became hybrids, finding themselves lost between the Divine and the Eldritch. These tainted Gods were hereby referred to as the Eldritch Gods. Many on both sides of the war were lost, but eventually the Elder Gods were victorious. The Ancient Ones were spread thin and forced to break themselves apart into lesser titans, hiding until they can regain their original power. New life began to appear on Ethos due to the presence of the Eternal Dread. These beings were made of pure darkness, knowing nothing but fear, anger, hatred, and sadness. Feeling for these creatures, the Radiant Keeper divided its essence among them allowing the light to live on through tiny glimmers in each of them. Since these beings held only a sliver of the Radiant Keeper's power, they are significantly weaker than the gods, but are saved from eternal torment. These beings will later be known as mortals. The sacrifice of the Radiant Keeper marks the beginning of the first era, the Age of Fire. No one knows exactly what happened during the 5,000 years of the first era, but in this time the few remaining Elder Gods began birthing and creating new gods. Many of these beings watched on as the mortals started to die off from the cold, dark, and empty world that was left behind by the Radiant Keeper. The gods didn't realize the potential of the mortals until they were able to steal fire from the first of the dragons, gaining the attention of the gods and solidifying their survival in the realm. Thousands of years have passed since then and a lot of things on Ethos have changed, but this is all you need to know for now. 
In my world, I allow the use of other pantheons and lesser gods that players may create for their specific characters, but as of the most recent campaign in the timeline, there are 10 deities that are a part of my custom pantheon. We covered eight of them in the creation story, four elder gods and four eldritch gods. These are the deities that I want to work on today, because they've been around since the beginning. These guys have been given different titles and symbols to represent them by different groups of people around the world, but I've never taken the time to fully flesh out what they actually look like. I had to decide which ones to tackle first, so I've selected a few from this list that have piqued the most interest from you guys. The Maiden of Whispers, Goddess of Winter. The Maiden of Whispers is affiliated with Peace, Harmony, Sacrifice, the Full Moon, and the Element of Water. The Maiden holds tranquility above all else, and asks only one thing of her worshippers, harming no living creature. A very small group of disciples are an exception to this rule, her champions. A champion of the Maiden is willing to sacrifice their internal and physical peace to allow others the chance to keep theirs. They will fight to maintain harmony. They will slay the wicked that refuse to lay down their arms and wish to do nothing but destroy. The Undying Scholar, God of Secrets The Undying Scholar is affiliated with Knowledge, the Arcane, the Waning Gibbous, and the Occult. There's an old saying, two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. The Undying agrees. Unlike the other Elder Gods, the Scholar does not gain his power from the Divine, but instead from his insight into the Arcane. Those brave enough to worship him will be rewarded with lost knowledge, but to follow the Scholar is to enter a labyrinth. If you do not tread carefully, you will become one of the monsters locked inside. The Hound of Thorns, God of Nature and the Hunt.
The Hound of Thorns is affiliated with neutrality, balance, fairness, equality, the seventh phase of the moon, and the element of Earth. During this phase, the moon is left half illuminated and half shadowed. This represents the Hound's neutral morality. When it comes to the Hound, also known as the Forest Father or the Old Oak, depending on who you're speaking with, there is no right or wrong. There is only what must be. The Obsidian Weaver, the Goddess of Eternal Darkness. The Obsidian Weaver is affiliated with Fear, the Waxing Gibbous, and the Night. Most people who recognize the Weaver do not wish to describe her true appearance, but she is generally described as the fear one feels when looking into the dark, just before the unknown shows itself to you. That wraps up the eight main gods of our D&D pantheon. How do you guys think I did? I have to be honest with you guys. I like these designs, but I think overall, the first four might be a little stronger. I don't like admitting stuff like this, but I could have probably done better if I wasn't so horribly sick the last two weeks. I got a really bad case of food poisoning and I'm just firing out of both ends. Normally, this is where I tell you what my next upload's gonna be, but I've got something special planned and I don't wanna spoil anything, so just be ready for whatever. If you haven't already, please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out. If you wanna take a crack at drawing any of the prompts I've done or wanna send me some artwork to help flesh out some of my worlds, please send them to me over on my Twitter. I'd love to see what you guys make. But until then, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.